Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today we're going to be looking at Vogon Poetry, my 150 gram overhead saw robot. Now, in its last set of, sets of fights, it had some fairly obvious flaws. So today we're going to go through and try and tweak and change those. Realistically, it's not going to change too much from its current look and form. There's just a few things that we could do a whole lot better. The first three of which are all simple printing updates and changes. So the first two are to do with the arm. Currently the arm has this metal stick out the back of it, which is just a piece of like fencing wire. This is here as a self riding arm. So when uh, the saw arm is all the way up here and the whole robot gets tipped back, it rests on that and it's still on its wheels in a position where its wheels can drive it back into place. However, this thing, is flimsy and horrible and lost me a couple of fights and as you can see right now like it's terrible in the midst of battle this thing uh, does not do exactly what it needs to do the other thing is the wires coming out of this motor are quite precarious and if they don't tuck back properly and you can see i've got them wrapped in around underneath this arm if they're not tucked back like this properly, they actually touch the can of the motor and can rub and cause issues. And if they rub too, too much, then what ends up happening is uh, the motor eats through them and shorts itself out. So we don't like that happening. And I can see on this one that there is just a little bit of that starting to happen. So I want to change up this whole arm so that uh, it doesn't do that, uh, so that the wires can be pushed out of the way quicker and safer and easier. And also I wanna change out this self writing arm for something that will do the job a little bit better. Finally, we have the armor, which broke off in the last, um, or in the rumble there. So these were just 3D printed mounts, 3D printed directly into the chassis, but that was not strong enough to hold on. However, if we look at the front here, uprights took two shots from some form of horizontal spinner uh, and they have survived. The, the plastic seems to have been hit, there's some chips taken out of them, but they are still upright, they're still sturdy, they're still solid. So that's how we're gonna fix this problem, we're going to fix that problem by doing the same thing, printing separate pieces and then epoxying, or not epoxying them, acetone welding them onto the chassis. So let's get some parts printed. So I have a lot of bits to print here, obviously, because we're gonna do a whole new chassis and everything, but I wanted to show you guys this. And I also wanted to test this out first. So this here is the new arm for the robot. So it's a little bit flimsier than this one, uh, which I think is actually a good thing because I'm kind of in need of a little bit of weight and also has a better cutout for the wiring to hide behind the arm. I think it should be okay. I haven't ever had any problems with this one and we'll see how we go. If it's um, bad, then we can just add a bit more beef back into it and it should be fine. Uh, but one of the interesting things is that I was originally going to design and print everything all in one go and have this plastic standoff out the back here just be printed as part of this. However, uh, one of your guys' comments, I believe from uh, somebody going by the team name Team Rocket, which is an amazing combat robot team name, uh, gave me the idea to do an interchangeable one, which uh, as soon as I said that I had this idea, which is like a little socket, uh, which can be bolted on into the arm like this. And I think this is absolutely the best idea because this is potentially going to get hit and broken. Uh, it also allows me to print the arm once and then print many different types of uh, standoff arm out the back here. So we can try a bunch of them and work out what works, how long they need to be, how curved they need to be, all of that good stuff to get the thing to actually self right. Um, now this is fresh off the printer, so I might need to uh, sand out the middle section, but in a, very, in a hot second here, we're going to swap these out uh, and we're gonna see if this thing will self write. So I've done some sanding and we are ready for a quick test fit. One thing I will say about this too is I was expecting the ABS to be a little bit resilient. What I wasn't expecting 
uh, was the spring in it. So if I grab and pull this and basically bend it back on itself, it springs back. Now, I was kind of thinking that it might just get weak uh, and if it bends out of the way, that's gonna be it. But in actual fact, the more it bends, the more it resists the bend and tries to spring back into place. Obviously, if this is PLA, it would just shatter doing that. But in the ABS, it seems to be able to hold, hold form rather nicely. And we might even be able to make this piece out of HDPE on a mill or something like that. I don't really know how that would work because um, I haven't tried to finesse mill anything before but that might also work a little bit better than this. Anyway, we're going to mount this arm on up here uh, and see what we can do with it. Um, I will say I have uh, pulled the ESC out of this setup and obviously the weapon is gone. No weapon, no weapon motor, all of that stuff. So uh, hopefully, yeah, we can do a quick little drive test here on the desk and it's not too, too bad because it is just 150 gram, essentially wedge at this point. Uh, so let's see how I've done in terms of getting everything lined up. All right, servo seems to have moved to where it wants to be. Okay, that is our full reach position. That's as high as the servo will go. Uh, and then if we throw it back, oh, nice. That doesn't even have a balance point up there. I mean, it probably will once we add the saw blade and the motor back into it, but that's really good. Watch, 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 this, watch this thing as I go further. Like if I push down here, it straightens and it holds and then it springs. That's awesome. Ha! I was not expecting that to work that well with just a tiny little piece. Uh, that is so, so good. Um, yeah, we, I think this is the key. I'm obviously gonna have to mount everything up and try it again in a second, but I'm pretty happy with that. That is working pretty well and it's gonna be way better than this old piece of wire and actually probably lighter than this old piece of wire too, I would suggest. Um, huh, and even at full reach, that's very nice. Even at full reach, this thing, that's, that's great. Yep, awesome. All right, I am really, really happy with that. Uh, now it's time to print a whole lot more ABS parts. Uh, yeah, this is actually, this is everything, I guess, for the newest iteration. So as we had before, we have a standoff, which is literally just there to hold the other side of the weapon axle. Uh, we also have a new servo mount arm. I've actually moved the servo position again because the other one was kind of getting in the way of where batteries and stuff were sitting out in the back here. So I've moved it forwards again a little bit and we'll see how we go. I also knocked off a little bit of the holder because it used to be about yay tall. Um, but I just kind of knocked that off to save a little bit of weight. It's probably gonna save me like half a gram or less, but it might be enough. Uh, and then we have our little standoff pieces in here that go in and are gonna hold up uh, the outside armor and all of that fun stuff. Obviously though, I need to clean all of these off and then acetone weld them together. And I'm actually probably gonna end up using this brim material uh, in the acetone to make the ABS slurry that I need to get this to actually work. So the one time that, yeah, there's not gonna be that much waste out of a 3D printed part. So there we go, all done. Everything is now acetone welded in place and all seems really quite solid. So last trick in the book is to do a transfer. I've also wired up a new ESC to put in here. I haven't wired up a new motor yet. I want to try this motor out and see if it's the motor that's the problem or if it was the ESC that's the problem. The ESC had a bite taken out of it so I was assuming it's that, but we'll, we'll see.
So uh, the big question, how much do we weigh? We've got the robot, the saw, uh, the two side arms, and the wheels. And we're at 144, yes. All right, so we've got six grams for a top plate. I actually might print a proper top plate for this at some point. Not now, not in this video. Uh, but that is pretty good, actually. I was expecting to be way like closer to the line than that. And I've, I've got, uh, the, the thing that I want to do for antimatter is going to take some weight, I think. Uh, so I, th yeah, it's good that I've saved, I've managed to save a little bit of weight. I think I've saved a whole gram in this build process so far. Um, yeah, so this is actually pretty much ready to go. I might, uh, do a test in just a second, slapping these wheels on and, going from there uh but i will say i have actually looked at maybe changing the wheels over on this uh this is just a concept right now but these wheels rather than those wheels and the whole difference is these guys are flexible either pla or tpu i believe uh with a rubber tire glued on these are a mold in place abs version and not only are they a little bit smaller, but they're also a little bit thicker, which means more grip on the ground. They're also lighter by a whole gram. So by swapping these wheels out, we'll actually go down to like 142 or something, which will be awesome. Um, yeah, the only thing with them at the moment is I did try one out just before and uh, they don't fit quite as well as I thought they did. I thought these were gonna be like, absolutely perfect but what i missed was that um this back section is not where i thought it was in cad it doesn't sit quite here and also this back lip i didn't do it take into account this back lip out here either uh so what you'll find or what i found is that it can sit there uh, and the wheel kind of doesn't touch the ground it barely touches the ground at that position so this is a position that i basically couldn't get out of i don't think uh which is not great So before I talk about how I think that one, I just I have a couple of quick little announcements I wanted to do at this back end of the video. Uh, so the first one is I am actually going to be in a video on the World of Woodrow channel. We did a kind of uh, scrap heap challenge cross bodge bots type thing, which was a lot of fun. Uh, Jevin over at the World of Woodrow invited me to do that. I had a blast doing it. He should have the video out. Uh, this weekend sometime, I believe. I will leave a link to his channel in the description down below and also a link to that video itself once he gets that video up. Uh, I'm not 100% sure when he's doing that, but look out for it. I'll also probably put a thing in the community tab once it's out there. Uh, the other thing too is I am gonna take a break for the next two weeks. So for the holidays, I am actually gonna take a holiday. 
Uh, so there will be no videos for the next two weeks on this channel. Uh, and then we'll be right back into it uh, in the new year, basically. Yeah, so that's the housekeeping out of the way. I, I'm i impressed. Um, yeah, I didn't think I'd changed all that much to the design or to any of the kind of like grabby lifty mechanism-y stuff, but that had a lot more power in the arm, it felt like, uh, and in the saw, because it was chewing through that chassis, no problem. So much so that it actually left dust all through the inside of the robot. So yeah, uh, part of that six grams is definitely uh, a top plate of some form because yeah, we we really need one. Otherwise, we're going to keep having our electronics covered in plastic dust, which is awkward and annoying. Um, I think, realistically, the reason why that arm had more power this time is I've moved the servo back to where it was originally, and the maths for that works better. I think the gear teeth mesh better at this position than they did in the other further back position. Um, so that's probably what's done that, is the gear teeth mesh better, which means that the servo can put more power into the arm, which means we can cut better, which is great. I really, really like that. Um, yeah, that's done really well. So there's a few little bits and pieces that I'm going to do cleaning it up uh, and getting it ready for the next fight off camera, one of which is going to be my anti-antimatter uh, device, but I'll, I'll talk about that after we've had that fight. Antimatter doesn't need to know that just yet because I know he's going to watch this video uh, and I'll also yeah clean up the wheels work out what I'm doing with those probably print ABS versions uh, maybe the bigger size maybe not I'll, I might try these uh, and also attach the front the side arms and do a top plate but other than that uh, I think we're good to go the major changes have been done today um, oh I didn't test the wheelie bar but I did test it earlier so I feel like it should be okay where it's at uh, I don't think that the um, the actual mount position hasn't really changed anything, so there's no real uh, need, I guess, to test that out. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed that one, and I will see you in the new year.